Good, and I am not muted. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this is uh, Wednesday, May 15th, the Healing the Heart of America course. And I'm just so grateful everyone is here, both here in person and online, on the phone. You know, I'll, uh, I'll say a couple things before we get started. Yes, I'll say a couple things before we get started. Number one is, did any of you all see that incredible letter by James Baker where he says, I am only going to respond to Donald Trump with love. It was just like a shock to read such a letter. You know, James Baker is, was the general counsel for the FBI. And, you know, the, they're all, you know, Baker and Comey and McCabe, or I don't, I don't know all the names. They're all being uh, sort of investigated now. And Baker's response is, I'm only going to respond with love. And I go, oh, good. Someone on, on the phone sent it to me last night. Listen, if you, read, if you all read the letter, I think I'll send it out to everybody on my list. And if you're not on my list, please go register at healingtheheartofamerica.org. Okay, because I send out emails two, two or three times a week about what's going on. But uh, it was such an incredible thing, and he quoted, he quoted, I think it was, you know, he had these conversations with uh, Comey. Is it James Comey? Yeah, James Comey. And, and Comey always kept referring back to this letter that Martin Luther King wrote, you know, letters from a Birmingham jail or something like that. It's just, you, you read it and it's just, you know why we would revere Martin Luther King, because he's, how he's just responding with love to everything. And I realize this is just what we're doing. And, and I'm so grateful. You know, I'm not going to say we're, we did that, we caused that, but we, you know, we and people like us are causing a shift. So I'll, I'll claim a little, little, little bit of credit here for all of us. Because it's just, just a, you know, it was like, my goodness, let's step above the, the normal back and forth fighting that we have here. So thank you to everyone here in the room. Thank you to everyone on the, on the phone call because the person on the phone call is who sent it to me. So um, the other question I have is, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I gave out some homework, like sending love and approval to people in your lives. Anybody have any uh, luck with that? Any Anybody doing that? So I'm seeing some nodding heads, yes. Yeah. It's really powerful. So I just encourage everyone to keep that up. And I'll think of more things to, for us to be doing. So with that, our topic today, just so, so if you haven't, didn't get my email where I put out all the, uh, the schedule of topics, is immigration. So we'll have a lot of fun with that. And we'll go very deeply with that. I was reminded this morning because what's coming one of these days, and I, I don't know, I have to look at my schedule, probably next week, we're going to do, you know, the smart meter and the 5G, basically the electromagnetic pollution in the world. But uh, David reminded me this morning that apparently today is a big day for group protests and group solidarity on, on this. So was it, I'm going to leave this, David, I'm going to leave this church open. And if, you know, you want to come in here with anyone, I can't come but it's what, at 12.30? 12. So uh, anyone wants to, um, uh, wants to join in on that, this church will be open, and, and, and so you can bring anybody here that you want to. Does that work for you? Okay, great. So let's um, begin our morning now. And let's begin by saying hello to our hearts. So the invitation is, sit up straight, sit comfortably, hands over your hearts. It's actually a, an incredible posture of power, even though it is one of complete devotion and surrender, this particular posture. And just begin to breathe into your heart. And it may work out that you can start to feel your heartbeat through your fingers or your palm. If not, don't worry about it.
And there's nothing we really need to do. The posture does it, but you may start to notice as we become more connected to our hearts how much gratitude comes up when we put our hands over our hearts. How much love starts to awaken within us. And just let your hands drop when you're comfortable back into your lap. And just notice what putting our attention on our heart does. That energy from the hands. The hands are really an extension of our hearts. So when we do our labor of love, we, whatever we do, we're pouring the energy of our hearts into it through our hands. It's a very powerful connection and that will grow as we become more connected to our hearts. Just that energy from the hands to the hearts. So now to continue going into our hearts and I hope you understand by now why we have to go so deeply into our hearts to do the kind of work we are doing from our hearts. So this is heart rhythm meditation where we connect the rhythm of our breathing to the rhythm of our heartbeat. And it creates this synchrony between all the rhythms in creation. Rhythm with the cerebral spinal fluid pumping up and down the spine into the brain. The rhythm of the magnetic body of the earth, the pulsing of the earth. We connect to that. And it gets more clear over time. It's not anything we have to struggle to find. We just connect the rhythm of our heartbeat with the rhythm of our breathing. But we ease into it. So let's begin by just being aware of our breathing. How easy is it? How easy to exhale? How easy to inhale? How full is the breath? And we're not changing a thing right now. We're just noticing. And what does it feel like to breathe? Just wherever we are is fine. And at a certain point, we want to begin fully exhaling. And we do this by pulling in our abdominal muscles all the way back as far to the spine as they can. And then notice how automatic it is to have a very full inhale following that. And just check what's your experience here with a full breath, full inhale, full exhale. Our breathing is one of the few things we can do in our body that can be either conscious or unconscious. And when we go to a conscious breath like this, it actually frees up a part of the brain to start to bring up things to be healed. And at a certain point, when you're comfortable, just begin to notice your heartbeat. And inhale to your heartbeat. Typically, it's six to eight heartbeats. Could be more, could be less. And if you have trouble feeling your heartbeat, it's okay. It'll come. There's a couple of things you can do. One is you can hold your breath 10, 20, 30 seconds and you'll start to feel your heartbeat immediately. The second is simply feel your pulse. 
on your wrist or on your neck. Either way. And no matter what happens, whether it's easy to feel or not easy to feel, if you can't feel a thing, just start by breathing rhythmically to the count of eight seconds in, eight seconds out, or six, whatever's comfortable for you. When we do this in a group, and everyone on the phone is part of this group, when we do this in a group, our heartbeats begin to synchronize. Our energetic bodies begin to synchronize. We begin to become one heart functioning in this vast network across America, across Canada. We may have people from Europe on this call today. Whatever it is, just continue. I'll be silent for a, a moment or two with this process of connecting our heartbeat to our breathing. And every morning we just add one more application of this heart rhythm meditation. There's numerous, numerous and profound ways to work when we reach this balanced point. We started off by pulling in energy from the back and going forward, bringing the blessings of the divine out into the world. And then we spent one morning pulling in energy from the left receiving energy, sending energy out from the right, sharing and giving energy. And yesterday we explored the depth of our heart and the height of our heart. Those are six dimensions of the heart. All of them are worthy of a week or month of study, I assure you. You just go deeper and deeper into these. This morning the invitation is to go to the interior dimension of the heart. Just breathe into the heart and by intention allow the interior value, the interior value of the heart to open up. Now the great teacher Ramana Maharshi, most people are familiar with him as a proponent of Advaita, you know, who's having this thought? Who am I? But he was a strong proponent of connecting to the heart. And his teaching was that we have a heart chakra and then a bit below it, there's a deeper inner heart. Maybe off to the right a little, I think he described it. But wherever it is for you, could we just allow the pattern of our breathing to take over and allow ourselves to move into that interior space of the heart. 
and maybe it opens up for you right now, maybe not, it doesn't matter. All we do is we set the intention and we breathe and we love. Would it be okay with us if this sacred inner dimension of the heart opened up to us in its full glory? And is it okay with us if it opens up at the right time for us? And can we honor the wisdom of our hearts to reveal itself to us in the fullness of love at that appropriate time? And just breathe into the heart. Breathe out of the heart. And could we just allow gratitude that it's even available for us to be reminded from these great traditions of the heart, of this hidden value of the heart. How fortunate are we to even know that such a place exists and that we can go there and live in the absolute depth of the heart, the inner dimension. And from here, let's go back to our practice of expanding the heart out. We've been very inward. We inhale energy into our heart. And as we exhale, we allow our energetic body to expand. Just as far as it's comfortable. We don't try and force anything. Inhale and expand it out. Maybe you feel it a few inches, a few feet. Maybe it fills the room. And again, expand it out. Maybe it fills the county or the city or the state. Inhale into the heart and expand it out again. Maybe it fills up the entire country. Is it okay with us if we share our energetic body, the wholeness that we create in our hearts? Is it okay with us if we share it with everyone in this country, everyone in this planet? And perhaps it goes out to the far reaches of creation. Is it okay if we consciously allow our love to expand to fill all of creation? And again, we'd be easy, be easy with ourselves. It's just an imitation. Whatever we experience is perfect. Perfect. And could we just send out love to everyone on this phone call, everyone in this room, everyone, our extended family and friends, our nation, our country, our world. And from this expanded place in our heart, let's begin to explore the hidden energies within us. You know, we call them wounds because they feel that way. But they're really golden pockets of power and energy waiting for us to transform into the divine qualities of the heart. Could we begin by loving our body for storing all of this energy for so long 
that we can use it now for the expansion of our own heart, for the expansion of love in the world. So let's begin, and if anyone has any specific issue personally, please feel free to work with that. I'll ask questions that are designed to tie into the topic of immigration. But whatever is up for you, please do that. That's where the juice is for you. So my question is to look back into our past or into our current life and try and find a place where someone asked for help and you said no. No, I can't do that right now. No, I don't have the resources for that. I don't have enough time. And I might just be as simple as, you know, some panhandler asking for money or some homeless person needing a place to stay or something like that. It could be very simple or it, you know, could be a family member who's deeply troubled and we sort of throw up our hands and say, I, I can't help him anymore. Whatever it is, my invitation to you is, how do you feel when you say no? Do you feel a sense of regret, offensive guilt? Sometimes we'll feel a judgment. You know, they should get a job. They should be responsible. They shouldn't take drugs. Whatever feeling comes up, would it be okay with us if we just welcome that into our hearts and allow that to shift into the divine quality of your choosing? Usually I suggest love or compassion or wisdom or peace, or power, or courage, whatever it is. And you look back at this time, and quite often there's self-judgment there also, like I really wish I would have done something. And pull that energy up, and just let that transform. And check to see if there's any sense that you have what we call a perfection program. That I need to be perfect. I should be perfect. Or something bad is going to happen to me. And if you have that pattern in your life, I have to be better, I have to be perfect, whatever it is, can you just be with that and love that? Welcome it into your heart and let that shift into pure compassion for yourself. So let's go to the other side of that. When in your, in your life have you extended a helping hand to someone? And what happened? Sometimes it's a huge success and we feel wonderful. Sometimes we inadvertently step into the rescuer, victim, persecutor, triangle. We try and help someone and they think we're fixing them. And they bite back. Whichever happens for you, can you welcome it up, even if it's that wonderful feeling of having helped someone? Can you welcome that up? Whatever it is, 
if it's that wonderful feeling of having helped someone and having transformed your own life by that act of kindness, I know that certainly happened to me. Can you welcome that feeling up? Allow it to transform even more deeply into love. Could you allow it to get even better? We don't want to just heal the bad things within us. We get attached to the good things and we want to welcome them up and allow them to bloom even more. What other gift is there behind that energy? And if your experience is that you get bitten when you try to extend the hand of assistance, can you welcome up that resentment or that fear or whatever is there and just be with that, love that. And just discriminate here. Who would you rather be? The person who extends the hand to help or the one who is very protective of oneself? Either one is okay. There's a time and place for all of this. Either way, we want to use this theme in our past as a way to expand our hearts. Now let's go to another side of this. When have you been forced to contribute to a cause or a project that you don't want to be involved with? And the one that comes up to my mind first is I have to pay taxes into all these programs I don't support. But it could be as simple as practically forced from the company you're working for to donate to this char charity. And maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Maybe you'd rather go somewhere else. Or guilt causes us to say, yes, I have to do this, even though I don't want to do this. This may not be a huge charge, but we want to pull it up all the resentment, all the not liking, and let that energy shift into love, into forgiveness, into kindness. And now let's put it onto a larger scale. Here we are as a nation, a very wealthy nation, even if we have our budgetary challenges, still great wealth in this country. As you can see, it just every day when you drive on the freeways. So here we are, and we have these caravans of immigrants coming up, coming from disastrous countries where they're being persecuted, where they're being, you know, marginalized, and they're coming up to America to start a new life. So what comes up when you think about this? What feelings come up? For some of us, it's compassion. For some of us, it's fear. Whatever comes up, and we bring it into our heart and let our hearts expand. And let our hearts expand even more. And more. Half of America, or whatever the percentage is, 
sees the problem but says more or less we've got a great thing in America and we want to keep it this way and bringing in all these immigrants is going to change my life we'll lose jobs we'll damage the uh, social structure we have particularly the states right on the border it's a complete disaster for them and no one really seems to want the immigrants in their hometowns some towns are open to it so can you tap into this energy and just first of all how do you feel about this this half of America or whatever the percentage is that's resistant and is saying we've got ours and we want to protect it and keep it do we judge them and does judging cause them to change so can we welcome on that judgment and let that shift into love or whatever divine quality that you choose how would you like to respond let's go keep with this to the the half of America or the part of America that doesn't agree with you I mean there's a part of America that wants to have open borders how do you feel about that part of America and just that say America has become great through immigration and the people coming up will be a great gift to America solve our declining birth rate problems solve our aging population problems the ones who come up with the most industrious and hard-working and aggressive and and full of initiative we want them open up the doors let them come so how do you feel about that what comes up for you do you love them do they scare you either side pick the side that scares you and pull up that energy pull it into your heart and is it okay with you if that energy shifts into love into compassion is it okay with us if we allow different opinions in America I think we all know the answer is of course because we want to be free to have our own opinions and just check inside yourself how much judgment is there and could we let that judgment rise up into our hearts and shift into love let's check to see if we're judging the immigrants how dare they come and caravans no less causing this problem for us or how dare you say no to them people who are hungry in need wanting a hand whatever our judgments can we pull that up and just let that shift into love And can we silently say first to the immigrants I love you I love you I love you can we say to those who don't believe the way we believe just silently say this I love you 
I love you. I love you. Can we speak to the grand tradition of this country of welcoming the poor, the impoverished, and to that tradition, to the heart of America, can we say, thank you and I love you. Thank you and I love you. Thank you and I love you. And can we pull up a vision in our hearts of America as a spiritual leader of the world? Dharma coming to the West as that Tibetan Buddhist once prophesied. Can we pull up an image of America as this incredible heart-centered beautiful, pure, pristine country, the citizens full of love in their hearts, leading the world into a transformation where a wave of love begins to swirl around this planet and we begin to live truly with the old Vedic perspective of The world is my family. The world is my family. The world is my family. And let's pull our energy back into our hearts. Feel the soles of our feet so we're grounded in the earth. And just, when you're ready, open up your eyes. So at this point, we're going into the optional second half of this program where we work with people individually. Anyone on the phone, if you hit star six, you can move into the, uh, the Q&A line. That's what it's called. And uh, anyone with any comments, any questions, any gains, or if anyone's stirred up, Alan. My uh, experience is when I'm able to actually... You know, why don't you come up here so people can hear you? Good. Because, Good. Not because I was feeling about you, but you were parroting the standard media mm-hmm. uh, imposed understandings of America as a binary situation, which it is not. It's a very multiple thing. And, and I know from my own experience with my sister, who is a California Democrat. 
died in the world kind of picture of the former female candidate for president with her and her partner, and is very proud of that. <laughs> so, uh, Alan, Alan, okay, so good. So, what do you want to work on in all this? Because you're offended. Do you want to work on that? Uh, well, what I need to work on, actually, is that this part of my brain, uh, I'm putting my hand on the back of my head, uh, just around the place where the, the elephant is. Where the, where the spine hits the head. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the Ayurvedic, I'm just going to point out that part of the brain is kind of like the elephant's ears. Yes. So, so, are you disapproving of your brain right now? No, it's just a fact. Okay, so what's the problem? Uh, just, I'm, it's not exactly a problem. It's that if one isn't, if I don't get enough rest, so my brain is kind of uh, grabbing the energy first and won't let things fading up unless it happens. Okay. And my heart. Almost limited to here, it can't really expand that. So, you're at peace with this? I'm accepting it. Okay. Do you, do you need to do anything here, or should we open no, up the... I've been, I've been doing everything I could to kind of... Okay. Let, the, let that part of my brain rest, and let the heart expand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's, it, it, you know, it's... it's uh, so, what I'm getting from you is, this is something out of your control. Yeah, and how do you feel about that? I'm happy to correct it as much as possible. I'm also glad that I did what I did, which caused the problem. So, <laughs> so can I give you feedback? Absolutely. So, you go up into your head. And I have been in my head way too much. Yes, yes. And I, I keep asking to where you want to work, and you pull back up into your head. Okay? And you're not going to heal anything in your head. Okay. So... My invitation to you is, would you like to heal something? Sure. What would you like to heal? The feeling of need that gave rise to my uh, jumping into activity 230 until I'm oh. Okay, so you're, you're disapproving of something that you did. So, so you're, 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 you're happy. No, no, Alan, no stories. Could you, you jump up into a story right away. The minute I ask you a question, you go into a story, okay? And, and that's not, that's not going to help you. I get it. So you're not happy with something. Or else you wouldn't be sitting up here. There's a lot to fix about me, I'm fixing it as fast as I can. Okay, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to spend some? Heal whatever it is that's, if I can do it right now, heal whatever it is that's inhibiting my heart from being more. Okay, so how do you feel about that? About which your your heart can't go where you want it to go? Well, it's, uh, it's kind of bothered because my heart's pretty well developed. But okay, so good. So it's bothersome. Can you welcome up that feeling of bothersome? And where do you feel that? In your heart. Good. So can you be with that feeling? And can you love that feeling? No, no, that's not an answer. That's, that's in your head. Can you just be with that feeling and honor that feeling? You can. Right there. Not so hard, right? Good. So can you do it some more? And more. And what are you experiencing right now? Uh, kind of a, a warmth, kind of feeling, pleasant feeling in my heart where it creates uh, what I've brought into that. 
So you see how quickly that happened for you. Okay? So what I get is your challenge is in feeling your feelings. The minute you felt it, you could heal it. Right? Yeah, good. Is it okay with you if you start being a person who can feel his feelings? Okay. So you notice right there again, you went back to your story. Okay, is it okay with you if you become a person who all the time can be in touch with your feelings? Sure. That's okay, isn't it? And, is, and you say, that's my goal, but there's a sense of disbelief with that. No? Perfect. Perfect. What else do you need to work on? <laughs> a good nap wouldn't be a bad idea, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> okay, so you, you jumped into your story again. <laughs> okay, I know, but every truth story there is, is a story. All right, uh, and I, I hope I'm not being harsh and, and pointing it out. Okay, okay, good, good. So I just want you to again check into yourself. Do you notice any sensations, any feelings in your body, and what's your what's your experience there? Well, the feelings in my body are more pronounced here. Good. Good. So good. So so go back to your medulla oblongata. You know that that part. Can you can you feel that right now? Yes. All right. All right. Can you pull that energy down into your heart? Imaging it like a. Yes, that's fine. Pull, pull it down. Let it come down as fast as you want it to. And does it move easily? Yeah. When I image it. Good. Good. And keep letting it move into your heart. And what divine quality would you like that energy to change into? Yes, balance. balance. That's a perfect one. Good. Can you let it flow some more? And what's your experience right now? What are you feeling? So back to your experience. Okay. Did you notice you just jumped into your head there? Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So, I just want you to notice it every time, all right? I'm going to point it out to you. So, pull that energy back down into your heart. And is it okay with you if you develop this balance between your mind and your heart? Oh, yeah. All right, we got something we like here. All right, good. So could you allow that balance even more? Yeah, so while that energy is moving down in there, could you make that intention, allow that intention to arise? Yes, I can be balanced between my heart and my mind. And I can live in my heart and enjoy the fruits of my mind Simultaneously. That's right. And is it okay with you if the mind moves back to its rightful position of serving the heart? That's okay, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So is it okay with you if that growth process happens easily? And that you easily move to where your 
living your life being led by your heart. And the mind becomes this amazing servant to those deep wishes of your heart. That's okay, isn't it? Yes. And how's that energy flowing? Nice, nice, okay. It's showing up there as some wound that's being healed, okay. And is it okay with you if that part of your physiology tied to Ganesha, the medulla oblongata, is it okay with you if that value returns to its wholeness and pristine clarity? Yeah. Yeah. Ganesh is a gatekeeper, is it? And Ganesh has a huge heart, doesn't he? Really? He, he's, he's a perfect example of a huge heart and an incredible mind. This guy covered tusk teeth, so yes. He can't undo his thing. Rip off the tusk yes. Yes, that's exactly right. So is it okay with you if you move into your heart just like Ganesha and you don't need to break off any part of your body? Okay, is that all right with you? That's all right. So how's your, how's that part of your neck doing? Less insistent. Okay. Is it okay with you if you just continue that process and just keep moving into your heart and look out of this crowd here? Can you see they all love you? Can you take that in? And everyone on the phone, okay, can you take that in that you are a completely loved human being? Can you just absorb that for a moment? So you're blocking some love is what you're saying. Because I'm telling you, this crowd right here is in their hearts and they're loving you, Alan. And this crowd on the phone they're loving you too and you don't believe it, do you? Right. So can you, can you find that place where you put up a wall to reject love? And whether it's a visual or a feeling or whatever, you sank in deeply. I can see that. So, good, perfect. You sank in. It really, it really noticeable in your physiology there. So, is it okay with you if you allow love into your life? Okay, good. Is, could you allow that some more? And could you allow it to the degree where you begin to believe it could happen? And more. And everyone else, could you allow love into your own life? We all put up barriers to protect ourselves. Where do we block love from coming into our life? And Alan, you're the one that brought us to this place. Okay? So could you give yourself some love for that? I'm very... Yes, I'm very serious. I'm very serious. Is it okay with you if you just see that pool of energy, that lake, as a lake of love? And that you move and breathe and walk fully loved on this planet? And is it okay if you're fully loved by the human aspect and the animal aspect yeah, <laughs> and the elemental aspects? Would that be okay with you? Everything's okay. Right. So there's that bel disbelief. I get that. And it's not your experience. I totally get that. I, I totally honor this, by the way. But what, I, what my invitation for you is 
to allow yourself to be open to that possibility of a different style of living. Okay? Yeah. Okay? So is it okay with you if you again receive this love? And then take a look at this group again, Alan. Can you see there's love for you here? Yeah. And how are you feeling right now? Not better. Not better. So is it okay with you if this process continues and you just begin living more and more in love? It takes as long as it takes, right? Okay. But every day you begin to notice it more and more. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I get that. Thank you very much, Alan. Namaste. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's you did the work. I mean, well, we had to get you out of that mind a little bit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Radhika. So no one's on the phone in the Q&A. I don't want you all to feel like you're second-class citizens on the phone. Huh? No. No. That's Yes. The love kind of flows and then the thought comes and then the existence again. And, you know, I can find acceptance and resistance on both sides of the story. Right. Right. Integration. Yes. And then there was one point I just noticed that you said, you said, could you love the immigrants and then could you love the people who don't love them? I can find both sides of me. But then I, as soon as I started feeling that love for the people like, that don't want them, mm-hmm. then I had the picture of all the, the Trump rally last week where someone said we should shoot the immigrants. And Trump agreed and started laughing, and everyone else started laughing. And, and I, I, it upset me so much that. When I, I could love them, and then the story came back in my head, and I was back thinking, oh, they're the deplorables, you right. know, and I don't love, you know, and all that kind of negativity. So I lost it, and I thought, okay, I can love them right now here, but if I ever go to one of those rallies, I'm not going to love them. Shame on you, Rod. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I felt like... I. It's like that thing of dipping the cloth and fading, dipping and fading. Yeah. And, and I had the thought, okay, we're only here now. Just love now. You're not in that situation. But then my, you know, it was, so it's just Alan's thing, going back up and down and up yes. and down. So, is there a little bit of judgment going on here? That shouldn't be happening? Judging out there and judging here. So let's yeah. go in here. Yeah. So it shouldn't happen that your energy goes from your heart to your mind. <laughs> well, I just noticed it so clearly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, more, more that I should be able to maintain the love for people I disagree with. Yes, you should be perfect, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. You should be perfect. Okay, everybody, go there. Not how we should all be perfect, right? We all have it. Like one of those common, common. I should be perfect. I should be better. So could you welcome that up, right? And I'm speaking to everyone. Could you welcome up that perfection? That since I have to be perfect or something bad is going to happen to me. You know, when we don't even think about that. The, the ugly version of it is if I'm not perfect, they're going to kill me. No, it's if I'm not perfect, I'm not going to achieve the yeah. peaceful, loving balance that I've spent the whole life trying to attain. Yes. <laughs> yes. So is it okay with us if we just love ourselves just the way we are right now? Is that okay with you, Radhika? No. Yeah. Is that okay with everyone else here? Everyone on the phone? We just love ourselves just the way we are right now. Right? And we all have this vision of what we should be like. You know, we should be like 
Jesus or Muhammad or Ram or Sita or whoever it is, right? Amici. Whoever it is we think, aha. Uh -huh. And could we love the fact that we have patterns that we aspire to? We can. We could be grateful for them, right? And so imagine that we're a three-year-old sapling, three-year-old oak tree. Do we really judge the oak tree for not being 50 feet tall? Mm -hmm. Right? Could we allow ourselves to be absolutely perfect right where we are, just the way we are? Okay? You get that, Radhika? How, yeah. how does that feel for you? Yeah, I get this kind of feeling of crime or this kind of belief. Right. Could you let that expand? And could we all go to a place of peace about who we are? And recognize that just like that three-year-old oak tree sapling takes time to grow into a full oak, but it's perfect as a sapling. Should we allow ourselves to be perfect just the way we are? We don't have to change a thing. And yet, it's okay if we bloom. Right? It's okay if we transform. Both values are completely true. So how are you feeling, Monica? Good enough? Thank you. Thanks for bringing that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anyone on the phone? Nope. We love you on the phone. <laughs> Listening to Radhika, I just want to say this extremely short poem here. Of what use to yell hatch to an egg? <laughs> say that again. Of what use to yell hatch to an egg? Of what used to yeah, yeah. Yeah, hatch. hatch to an egg. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point yelling hatch to an egg. Oh. It, it will hatch it will unfold. Yeah. It is time. Uh, okay. All right, so it's now 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Even the optional part is, is done. <laughs> so let's make up some more homework. It would be some really good homework. I know. So I want you all to go home and do the mirror exercise, which means look in a mirror for five or ten minutes and love what you see. And if it's easy to do it with your clothes on, take your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> and just begin the process of loving your bodies. Got that? Nice homework, huh? Yeah. Well, thank you all very much. I'm always touched. And I'm going to unmute everyone here. Oops. Come on, get out of there. There we go. Hello on the phone. Yes, Hi, thank you. Hello. We love all of you. All right. Well, you guys, they love you all. <laughs> thank you. Thank love, you, love, love. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I love me, too. Yeah, I love me, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, in this meeting, God bless you all. And